Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today to our Internet of Things webinar with Arrow and AT&T. I'm Brittany Nelson, Partnerships Manager at Indiegogo. And here today with me are Jordan from Arrow Electronics and Ray Burke from AT&T. Before Ray dives into everything IoT, Jordan's quickly going to tell us a little bit more about the Aero Certification Program, a free program designed to connect you with the resources you need to bring your project to life. So Jordan, why don't we go ahead and get started? Awesome. Thank you so much, Brittany. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, like Brittany said, my name is Jordan, and I am one of the coordinators with the Aero Certification Program. So just a little background. Um, it is a free program that helps entrepreneurs get their products to market. We do have a lot of different resources and benefits to help you prepare for that your campaign to go live on Indiegogo and just to get it in through production. So we are able to help you all the way from ideation through production with everything in between, prototyping, marketing, manufacturing, anything. Some of the benefits of the Aero certification program include a $1,000 rebate that you can use on Aero.com and for other Aero services. You'll be mentioned in Arrow's social media platforms, as well as our monthly newsletters, and a chance to win flash funding, which I know a lot of you had questions about before, so I'd love to answer some of those later on in the webinar or offline. We also have manufacturing support, marketing support, supply chain, whatever you need in that sense. And lastly, we have the certification badge, which is used as a value adder to bring credibility to your project on Indiegogo. And just some updated program stats for all of you guys. Since the program's launch, we've helped over 16,000 people who have joined the program. We have see an 87% more funds raised to campaigners who are in the program than people who are not in the program. So that's a really great incentive. And you're going to be four times more likely to achieve your goal that you set for yourself on your Indiegogo page than those who are not in the program as well. And so far in the year, we've given away $1.7 million in flash funding awards, and we're definitely gonna continue that in the near future. Moving on, I just wanna to talk to you guys a little bit more about the new benefits and opportunities that joined us this year. So in case you didn't know, we're really excited to share our new collaboration with AT&T this year with the certification program. Um, in the 2019 season, AT&T joined as a select mobile connectivity provider for the Aero certification program because a lot of projects out there had an opportunity um, that AT&T was able to help us out with. That just means that now qualified entrepreneurs in the program can get access to exclusive benefits from AT&T. And some of those benefits include access to AT&T cellular data plans, support in connecting your IoT products, and then of course resources to help protect your data. Together with AT&T, we are also going to give away $250,000 in flash funding opportunities. And, and who doesn't like money like that for their project? And as a special gift for all of you, for attending the webinar today, everyone is going to get an email with a form to qualify for a free SIM card by AT&T. So keep an eye out for that. And if you guys have any more related questions to the Aero Certification Program or the partnership with AT&T, please feel free to send us an email at indiegogo at aero.com. And now to move things along, I'm excited to introduce you guys to Ray Burke with AT&T to talk to you guys more about the IoT opportunities. Oh, Ray, are you there? I can't hear you. So let's see if we can get Ray back on the line with us. Yeah, sorry. Got some technical issues. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Hi, Ray. Good to hear your voice. 
Oh, you guys just missed the funniest joke. I tell you, that was one of my best. So my uh, my apologies for the uh, the technical challenges there. But um, Jordan and Brittany, thank you very much for uh, including AT and T in today's um, presentation. And everyone who's on the phone, um, thank you for taking the time out of your uh, your your busy days that we all have. Uh, to participate in our webinar. Um, as Jordan said, my name is Ray Burke. I'm a uh, business development manager in the Internet of Things space at AT&T, and it's been an exciting place to work over the last few years. I've been here three or four years now. They're starting to blend together, but it, it's an exciting, dynamic area to, to be involved in. Um, what I'll do today is just take you through uh, some background information about AT&T and what we've seen and the bets we've made and seen success in the IoT space. So um, with that being said, where has AT&T seen momentum? So what we'd look to bring to customers is an an ecosystem wrapped around the IoT um, service stack that companies need to bring together for their customers. We've been involved in the IoT space for more than 12 years, and we've had a key focus to drive our growth has been working on improving the user experience for customers. That's what we've worked to do and to build out an ecosystem on behalf of our customers um, to support their journey in the IoT space because, you know, companies are in different stages throughout um, their IoT journey. To give you an idea, a little, a little background, um, as I said, we've been in the space for more than 12 years. You know, in terms of connected devices, this actually is, is a little a little old. The information, we actually have 60 million connected IoT devices on our network. So what, what that means, a connected device is not a cell phone, it's not a tablet, it's a gateway, a sensor, an internet gizmo that just pushes data. And so, the reason we've had this growth in scale, we activate more than a million customers a month right now based on how we focused on the user experience and the tool sets we provide our customers to enable, you know, growth in this space. So um, we've got 60 million devices on the network. You know, we placed big bets a long time ago in the connected car space. And so we have at least 28 million cars, I'll say at least, because I do not recall what the, the current data is, but we also have 28 of the top global car OEMs have selected AT&T for their connectivity. And that's not just here in the US, that's a global. And we also have made some investments in um, managing connected assets and connected fleet vehicles, and those are solutions that we have 6 million devices under management right now on behalf of our customers. So we've made bets around connectivity, global exposure, and then also the um, um, certain services. So if you want to take a look at a portfolio, and it, it, you can think for your business, there are components of the same stack that you see on this slide that you can offer to your customers, right? What, you know, the bottom layer is the core, that's the hardware. So at and offers a SIM that works globally, a single SIM, right? And you're gonna connect some kind of a gateway or a device or a sensor, and you need to connect that into something. And that connectivity can be um, wired, it can be Wi-Fi, or it can be cellular. Right. We also have satellite connectivity. If you have a use case in that space, um, and you know the next component you have to think about is <clears throat> what's your data ingestion strategy? How are you going to get get device data from the device from the sensor, and how are you planning? What's your user interface? How do you want to represent that to your customer? 
right? Same, same work that we do on behalf of our customers and offer our customers is what you'll be offering to yours. And then you have, you know, options in there. You can offer an end-to-end -end solution, right? And that's where you tend to have greater stickiness with your customers and a greater opportunity for, for margin when you think about an end-to-end -end solution that can include your connectivity, whatever it may be, right? Wi-Fi or cellular, um, hardware, right? Your the hardware components, um, and then there's the software licensing. What's the user experience you plan to deliver your customers? And um, you know the top area solutions. Some of the areas we've made investments are they. Asset, you know, vehicles, asset management, we've done work in smart cities and, and fleet as well. And what's kind of critical as you're building solutions in the marketplace is the security wrapped around uh, privacy and protecting your customer data and protecting their business, right? Um, so those are some of the components that we have in our portfolio that as you develop your solutions for your customers, you know, you want to be, um, you want to be focused on when you want to um, think about a cellular connected device, right? What are what are some of the um, you know, some of the steps you want to go through and think about? <clears throat> we always need to focus at first. What is what is the use case? What problem are we solving for, right? And then, you know, that's what's what's the problem? What are we solving for? Um, and then how is your solution going to be different than anything else in the marketplace, right? Very important things. Um, think about the business case, which is the, the why. How are we going to profit from this and be able to drive and grow business and generate demand, right? And then we solve those, and we have to start looking at, okay, um, how much data, right? It, what kind of data, what's your data consumption model going to be? What's the data utilization model going to be? The data ingestion, right? To be able to deliver a user experience that your customers will like. Um, thinking about, it's, it's really important up front to think about the use case and the differentiation <clears throat> to understand what your customers are looking for. Because that's a, that's a mistake a lot of companies make. And one of the approaches you can use in this space, and <clears throat> I, I find it interesting, it, it doesn't sound as hard as it is, but you know, if you have a use case or you're thinking of an idea, take the, the Amazon approach and think of the components you would like to have in a press release. Now, I, I've done that on a few projects, and it sounds easy, but it's, it's challenging to give that much thought up front about What's the solution? What's the user experience? And how is it different than what's in the marketplace? On the, the areas where we collaborate, when I say we collaborate, I mean at t collaborates with Arrow and can collaborate with you, <clears throat> is dialing in, okay, what is the uh, connectivity model that's going to work best? And, you know, with, with the cellular, you know, what's the module? What's the right module thinking strategically in the long term? Where do you want to take this product? Is this for a domestic only type solution? Is this something you want to look to scale and go global? It has global ambitions. And then on the technical side, some very important components really are, you know, tie in something as simple as an antenna. connectivity, this cellular connectivity. You know what? Both of them very valuable in the marketplace, very strong for use cases. Um, key differentiators uh, really are the ability, the ability for auto provisioning with um, an IoT cellular connected solution. You do have greater security wrapped around the encryption with the over-the-air transmission of information. 
um, and greater control of the user experience. And that can tie in, if you think about, you know, the age old story, not that we have as many as we used to, but think about the Kindle user experience. That was the definition of user experience. You buy a Kindle, you turn it on, you put some information in for your account, and you're off to the races, and it works. And as a user, all you have to do, now that's a Wi-Fi type solution or it's a cellular solution. With the cellular solution, you're good to go. You don't know anything about the other charges other than you bought a Kindle, and that's it. So that part ties in with your business model requirements to understand what are your costs and what is the objective for your user experience. You know what, Wi-Fi, you know, you do have a graphical user interface you need to, to build in and make sure it's there. Uh, there may be some additional support needed to tie in with connecting into the Wi-Fi network or changes happen with the Wi-Fi network. And, you know, there, there is some greater security wrapped around, as I said, a cellular connection versus a Wi-Fi type connection. All right. How do we go about, you know, what are some of the factors to consider when you're trying to understand the, the different levels of technology that your solution may require from a connectivity perspective? And <clears throat> this is where, you know, Arrow support for the solution you're looking to bring to market is critical. I mean, and, and this is just kind of a nice chart to give you an idea, the amount of uh, bandwidth consumed that, you know, a, a gauge, right, for the different types of connectivity modules you'll require, right? And it goes from the, the lower level of the low power wide area with the NBIOT and LTEM right um with the lower data consumption greater battery life that's offered from those technologies um to and there's some some differences in there right if your your solution set if you look at the nbiot those are devices that tend not to move right so it's it's just designed for smaller bursts of data right that are stationary when you move up to the LTEM space, you'll see with those use cases, we, you know, they highlight smart watches, alarm panels, asset trackers, appliances, <clears throat> patient monitoring. So there is mobility available, but still it's transmitting, you know, less data than uh, as you move up the stack with the CAT1 and the CAT4 type modules. Okay. When we think about low power wide area, that's this LTEM and NBIOT um, protocols that you may have heard of, right? They've been uh, <clears throat> uh, they're designed specifically for IoT, right? There's lower costs associated with it, with the modules and the devices. Right, you get an extended battery life. You actually, because of the way the um, the system's designed, you get extended coverage, right, which is helpful um, to support your solutions. Um, key variance between the two, if you want to have voice as an option, then that's LTEM. That's where you, you start off with LTEM. If the device is more stationary, lower throughput, then you have an opportunity to work with the um, the NBIOT protocols. And that's the way that is um, structured. On the right, we have that little chart there to just kind of highlight for you the different, uh, you know, technical aspects of LTEM versus NBIOT. Throughput is fairly substantial, you know, 300 kilobits versus just 32. Um, both have coverage enhancements. Right, um, both run and have duplex, both have power saving modes. One supports voice, one doesn't. 
Um, and, and the other thing, this is also licensed spectrum <clears throat> for LTEM versus NNDIOT. This is licensed spectrum. So it's within a carrier's managed network and the managed, managed service offering that we have an offer to our, our customers. All right, something to consider, and it, I'm sure you've heard some, some inkling about what's going on with 5G, and everyone's talking about these big 5G networks that are coming out, gonna change the world. Um, well, it's not gonna leave out, 5G will not leave out LTEM and NB-IoT. Those, those protocols are available now in the LTE spectrum, and as 5G is rolled out, <clears throat> Uh, LTEM and NB-IoT will actually still be available, right, within the 5G radios that will be coming out over the next 24 months. What you will also see in the um, 5G is I think you'll see more of an explosion with the NB-IoT type devices as well as LTEM because it has the ability, the protocol within 5G has the ability for massive uh, devices. Uh, volumes of devices to be able to attach to the network. You know, this this just provides you with a, uh, this chart gives you an idea of, you know, a coverage example, right? Standard LTE is right here wrapped around in orange, and then you can see how with LTE and, and then BIOT, you have the up opportunity for expanded coverage, better in-building type coverage, as well as, as, you know, things we highlighted before, right? Lower price, longer battery life, um, global deployments, we have licensed spectrum, you know, LTEM and NB-IoT are being adopted by, uh, by um, carriers across the globe, and there are different levels of adoption right now. So, and there's also the device OEMs and module OEMs are building um, communication modules that have the ability to transmit LTEM as well as NB-IoT. And this is where it's critical that you work with, um, or it's very important, and when you have an opportunity to work with Arrow, they can help guide you in the device options and the modules to meet your existing requirements and then also plan as you want to develop that global presence should that be part of the, uh, the solution you're looking to, um, to bring to market. All right. Yeah, it's just a little highlight. If you, you'd like to find out about some of the devices, we have um, a, a public facing website for IoT devices, att.com forward slash IoT devices. You can find out about the latest modules um, and devices that we have certified on our network. You know, one of the things that's kind of important, and um, there's a couple of questions that came up, is you, you want to look at having an ecosystem. Some of the things that are important um, for you as you, you make, you develop your business and work on the business model, is pick partners that can grow and uh, grow as your business grows. And so you get to pick the services that make sense for you. And then as you look to build out those services and develop those services or your needs change, you know, you have partners in place that can grow as you need to grow and scale as you need to scale. And that's some of the things that, that we feel very strongly in the relationship with Indiegogo and Arrow Certification Program that was very attractive um, to at and to participate with this type of, uh, of a solution offering for developers. All right, I'm not going to speak too long about this, but I'm, we, I welcome any questions you may have. Just kind of a quick, quick overview of 5G, the potential, and, and I think some of the points that um, should be of interest to you or, or may be of interest to you, right? To consider when you're, when you're planning, right? What are they talking about with 5G, right? 
so there's there's multiple areas. Carriers have different strategies. Our our strategy is is tied in. We've got thirty coverage in thirty cities by the end of this year. I think twenty one we have five G coverage available. Right now it's not blanketed across the whole city. That's where we're working on the deployment. And that'll continue to expand throughout the end of uh, 2019 and into 2020. But some of the important factors that are going to be provided by 5G that are a little different than LTE is really the low latency that will come out. All right. And because of that low latency and the way the um, um, the different uh, bands are going to be put together you know what, we'll have greater reliability um, to support applications and from the industrial side, right? Another piece is massive IoT connectivity that will be tied in with how many types of sensors we can have, which has applicability to smart cities, has applicability towards manufacturing, right, that are going to become more and more important if you think about augmented reality, you think about virtual reality in a manufacturing environment, and then also fast speeds, right? Fast speeds aren't going to apply to everyone, but um, you will be able to see some incredible speeds coming out there. All right, you know, another component that you'll start to hear more about is the edge, right? What, what 5G is bringing and what um, the dynamic you're going to see in the marketplace in the next two years, right? You're going to see edge computing, and that's what's really going to reduce latency. So the edge computing, we're moving the cloud closer to the edge, closer to the, um, the end users. And that's going to drive down latency, right, which would be very important. It's going to enable things like the autonomous cars, right, which is a bit away but also the mixed reality because the edge computing and the reduced latency is going to allow companies to be able to place their applications closer to the devices, which are going to drive the, um, the ability for new applications, right? New areas of growth. Um, we will have faster speeds, right? And in the cities and along the highways, we're going to have to have greater densification and carrier aggregation for different bands to enable the, the bandwidth requirements to support changes that are coming around driverless cars, this mixed reality, things along those lines, right? And um, companies are leveraging the software-defined networking investments that have been made over the last five years to enable this type of network design and bandwidth application delivery over time. So that's been a big, a big driver with this is the work that the carriers have done in this space with software defining. Um, you know, that being said, that's kind of a, that's a quick high level overview of AT&T where we've made some investments and, um, you know, Brittany, that is it for me. I, I understand we have a few questions that may have come in. Yeah, absolutely. So we asked your questions before the webinar. So I've got a couple of here for you. The first question is, what do you need to be successful in the IoT space? For an entrepreneur starting out, what advice do you have, Ray? Okay, so uh, you know what, I, what I'll, I'm going to just kind of repeat something I had touched on before. I think it's really important to know, and, and we had that one slide, if you think about the components, right, what's your user case? What problem are you trying to solve for, right? And what's the end user experience? I, I think the, if you if think about uh, taking that Amazon approach and writing a press release for the product you're looking to build. That really makes you kind of think about what what is that user experience you want to deliver and you want your customers to understand. And, and you know what? Test it. Test it in the marketplace. Um, data ingestion 
uh, is important, being able to bring this data into a system, but what is the user experience you want customers to see, right? What is that graphical interface? And that's, that's kind of support, that's kind of important, um, I think, for an entrepreneur. And the other component is pick your partners carefully, right? You want to pick a partner that, that aligns with um, what your objectives are now, but that also can grow and scale as your business needs tend to grow and scale. Absolutely. That's great advice. I'll do another quick plug for the Air Certification Program. It's totally free. They offer one-on-one -on -one consultations with their expert engineers. So if anybody has an idea or any questions, uh, they are a great resource to start out with. All right, next question, Ray. In your opinion, what areas of the IoT market are still untapped? Like what are the current growth sectors, do you think? So this one is, uh, you know, this is a really uh, good, tough question. Um, you, you know, I, I am, uh, I am confessed, I am not an entrepreneur. Um, I, you know, I work, I, I work in in AT and T strategic vertical. So I have our our large global customers uh, that have complex solutions are the ones that I tend to work with. But, but areas that we're seeing growth and are going to continue to see growth and innovation are going to be tied to, you know, mHealth, right, manufacturing, um, uh, asset management, supply chain type solutions, and, and location-based solutions. So l let me give you an example of something. This is a, a product that at and I think, I think this is public information. It's coming out publicly very soon. But we've worked in the hospitality industry, right? And, and what it, this is all around um, personal safety, right? There's something we've rolled out called AT&T Staff Alert. And what it, is, what it is designed to do is help protect staff, right, in the hospitality industry from uh, you know, to provide the ability to locate, provide assistance for the staff. And the solution is tied in, and it's, again, this is one of the end-to-end -end solutions. So it includes, you know, connectivity. It includes software licensing, that user experience, right? It includes the hardware components, all right, and what it is is the staff in the hospitality industry have the ability to carry around a portable lightweight button with a, a little light. And in the rooms in these hospitality institutions have been, um, they put in some Bluetooth beacons. So they're not tied in with the hotel Wi-Fi network because that can get crowded, that can cause delays, the Wi-Fi network could be down, and they want to be able to control that user experience to have this network up and running. And um, you know what? That Nothing is activated unless a button is pressed twice, right? So it has a low power Bluetooth uh, um, emission. And then the, the beacons are, you know, sent to a cellular gateway, and the cellular gateway transmits that information. Um, there's also a web-based portal, software side, what's that experience, um, to manage uh, the alerting, and then the associate type devices, right? So this is kind of important, right, because it helps, you know, employees know that, um, they can establish their location and notify management should they feel uncomfortable, right? So here's an example of something that's new that is solving a, um, uh, an area that's going to see, I think, increased growth, and that, that's around personal, personal health type stuff. Very cool. All right, next question is, this is kind of a long one, so bear with me. How is provisioning done? How is provisioning done for large scale device deployment? Are SIM cards inserted at time of manufacturing and packaging? I've also heard of e-SIMs and or soldiered SIMs. 
I'd love to hear more about the various methods of connecting, how it affects global deployment, and the best general practices related to upfront design decisions that could impact larger scale global deployments, and how to think about that in the early design stages. Okay, as long as I don't have to repeat that, I think <laughs> no. I got it. so that that again, this is a um, this is an important question, and you know, you'd be surprised how how many companies, um, you know, don't take the time to think through, or don't to plan completely for each of these steps, and and it, it causes hiccups to them. So you know, provisioning best practice, got to tell you. Um, for a large-scale deployment, think about, I'm, I'm going to revert back to the Kindle story, right? The, a SIM card is inserted uh, during the, the integration process, right? When the device is being manufactured and then when it's being packaged up. But one of the other things that's done, and this is what you can do with the SIMs, and with the AT&T Arrow relationship, do you have that ability to test the SIM you put in that device without incurring any additional cost, to make sure that the SIM works and the device is able to connect to the network and pass information. So what you're doing is focusing on the user experience in that space. So that's where if you're installing your SIM during the manufacturing and integration process, and these are services that Arrow provides, Right? You can also include testing the SIM to be sure it's going to work and that when your customer gets your product, when they turn it on, it'll connect into the, it'll connect to do whatever it's supposed to do, right? That's important from, for two aspects. One, as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur, you want a positive customer experience, but then two, you also, not, not just from the user experience, you, you want to reduce the number of defects. You don't want to have to incur the cost necessarily of either sending a technician out or someone from the team out or um, uh, using a third party to send someone out to service something or to reship things and incur those costs if you can avoid it. That's all about effectively monetizing your solution with a, just you know proper planning up front or as much planning as you can do. Next question, eSIMs. Yes, eSIMs are coming. This is one of the trends that you're going to see over time. And eSIMs are, you see, there's multiple definitions of eSIMs, right? Here in the United States, domestically, we consider eSIMs <clears throat> solderable SIMs, right? So in the manufacturing process, you can solder a SIM, an eSIM, into your device. Very helpful in the automotive industry, in the airline industry, oil and gas type industries where there's temperature fluctuations and um, you know vibration, uh, things along those lines. All right, the agricultural industry. Okay, and then that eSIM is credentialed to you know AT&T as your your carrier. Europe has a slightly different system where they have eSIMs and you're allowed to easily reach credential between multiple carriers at times. Um, AT&T does have a solution in place for the automotive industry where they um, they have a need for something called subscription management. And if anyone has any questions, just reach out to Brittany and we can set something up offline to talk in greater detail about that. All yeah, right, absolutely. so that touches on this then. All right. Thank you. Now. Thank you, Ray. All right. Oh, did There's you a little more. Oh, yeah, I still got more. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, sorry about that. I, I'm only on, on sentence two, question <laughs> two. Um, uh, various methods of connecting right and how it affects global deployment this is where you know working with arrow and at&t can help you plan right to to manage the right level of connectivity based on the geographical areas you want to deploy to because you have you know wi-fi low power wide area 
There's other low power options, you know, Zigfox. Um, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Uh, but, you know, so there's, there's solutions that have a carrier grade security and throughput um, built into their solution. And then there's some others that are not as secure, do not have as robust an ecosystem of devices and connectivity around the globe. All right, and that's where, you know, this question also ties in with the upfront design decisions. That, that is where, you know, leveraging um, Arrow certification program and the engineers at Arrow have supporting your account and AT&T can work together to help make sure you're working on the right design decisions up front. Okay. Awesome. Done. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. All right, we've got two more questions here. The next one is, can you explain how the sunset of 3G signaling will occur and how it will affect IoT devices? <clears throat> Happy to, yeah. Um, well, you know what, as networks evolve, carriers evolve networks as, um, as new designs come through and there's hardware innovation and software innovation wrapped around them. Sunsetting of 3G um, will impact your device here domestically in the United States um, if it's running on a 3G module. Right now, um, I can say for AT&T, we, we are not allowing new 3G devices to be added to our network because we're, we're, we're in the process of evolving that 3G network and then um, repurposing that bandwidth in to support our LTE and 5G network um, evolution plans. So, you know, here domestically, you know, you should be designing all your modules to focus on LTE, whether it be low power wide area or standard LTE. When we think about Europe, and the rest of world, 3G is prevalent, but countries are starting to make announcements as to when they're sunsetting their 3G networks. So, you know, here domestically in the U.S., you should be focusing on LTE and uh, low power wide area solutions. On the global front, um, we need to have a conversation together, get together with the ARO team, and um, and we will will connect with you on, on looking at 3G and evaluating what your plans are and, um, and looking at a multi-year kind of strategy session. Awesome. All right, last question is, in your opinion, how will IoT cellular developments and trends change in emerging markets once they're rolled out to consumers? Well, that's a, um, hmm. Hmm. What a, you know? What I'm uh, I'm not sure how to approach the emerging markets part of that. Um, in my how will IoT cellular deployments and trends change? So uh, you know what 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 I can say I'm not really sure what you know the emerging markets you know piece how if we're supposed to think about that here domestically in the U.S or most of world, but uh, some of the trends you'll see, I think, in, in IoT cellular developments are going to be happening in the next few years, and they're going to be tied around um, how, how carriers need to bill or invoice or look at the connectivity capabilities that we offer to customers from this IoT perspective. Part of that's going to be driven by um, the continued 5G network evolution. It's going to be evolved by the edge computing coming closer to um, the consumer. That's going to drive different business models because um, uh, industrial customers and carriers will be able to better control traffic that may or may not need to traverse the internet. Maybe some traffic for your solution stays within the manufacturing environment 
Well, that's, that's a different business model because that's not a data consumption business model. That's a network access and management type model. So I think, um, uh, I think we'll see trends in that aspect from cellular development. Um, and I'm not sure how to tie in that piece about once rolled out to customers, but uh, I'm okay. happy to try to address any other questions. I think that was our last one. I think that was great. Um, I think in this space, everything's moving fast. There's always new developments. And uh, thank you so much for going over all of those slides with us um, and providing all those great insights. And thank you to Jordan as well. Um, everyone, thank you so much for attending our IoT webinar today. We'll be sending out a follow-up email later that will include a quick form for you to fill out uh, to receive a free SIM card from AT&T through the Aero Certification Program. So if you're working on an IoT project in the US, just fill out the form that we send out later today to qualify. Um, and then if you have any additional questions about this webinar, please reach out to indiegogo at um, Thank you again, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Have a great day.